I don't know, Brendan. I'm uh, a little stuck for for an open this week. What to do? What to do? Well, we got to be. We we have to approach this delicately. I mean, we. Yeah. I mean, it's really this is this film is you know it's, it could be it could it could end up poorly for us if we make the the wrong if we say the wrong thing. You know, certain things we cannot do or say. Right. Ooh 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 ooh. I might have something. Okay, well, let's see. It. Well, we could uh, talk. Uh, no, 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 never mind. Okay, no, no. Um. Uh, psh- mm. Oh, we could say oh. that. We could say that. Uh, this week's uh, episode is brought to you by K. Nope, no, we certainly oh, can't. No, no, we, we cannot. No, we definitely we cannot should approach. Absolutely that. not do that. No, certainly not. No, no, no. Um. Uh. Well, I mean, oh, you, you know, you we could we could do um we could uh we could um uh, you know just go into the fridge uh get a nice bit no 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 oh no. yeah um yeah. don't want to eat that that's no, no it's not okay no no or or, or drink no mm, no no no. Uh, no oh no no i got okay we we could do a sketch about how one of like the the producers or the writer i'm i'm i'm, I'm just let me let me spit ball here okay. just a little bit that one of the writers or producers is like the grandson of al jill no no we oh, probably shouldn't no, no, no. 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 wait does that mean um, that my neil diamond remake no that's no, out too. still that's, still out out yeah oh mr mr brendan mr nathan i have idea help your show Okay. Careful. I is is fine. I, I I purchased this wig and brown makeup after no. Halloween. Start the theme music. Just no. start the theme music. We are not. No, Milos, get out. Uh, well, now that he's cleared out of here, welcome, everyone, to What Were They Thinking? A podcast about band of questionable movies. Uh, I am Nathan, and with me, as always, is... Brandon. Mm-hmm. I always thought it was Brandon. Oh, look, I look like a jerk all this time. <laughs> wow, you're just discovering this now. Sure. Yep, just but now. I, I'm, I'm going to buy that story, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, so... Uh yeah, um, yeah. Like I said, we talk to we talk about bad to questionable movies, and yeah. this is both. Yeah, bad and this super is, super questionable. This is <laughs> there are so many, all almost all of my notes for this movie end with a question mark. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if you if you didn't if you just blindly downloaded it, maybe we're in your RSS feed or whatever, and, and you just clicked on us and. Uh, yeah, you don't know what we're talking about. Uh, we are talking about uh, Soul Plane. Soul Plane. Whew. Yeah, 2004, I uh, believe. Um, but it's interesting it, it, that it's, it's called Soul Plane, uh, whereas I feel a bit of mine died because I watched it. So, mind, body, and soul just killed by every single minute of this movie sorry for the spoiler alert guys but this was a toughie <laughs> yes um to, to say the least uh but yeah this came out in 2004 and did you know that it was like a huge bomb that that doesn't surprise me in the least because i thought this... because of its sort of cult following which i think we'll get into later maybe um it had it because it, it cost like 19 million dollars to make and it made like 16 which is a pretty big bomb because you're not even breaking even just with those numbers and yeah. you get other stuff on top of that plus how much of that is worldwide so i i think what is it seems to me like it's the kind of movie that a lot of folks would flock to 
um, you know, and then like the first week of people who went to go see it <laughs> were like a- avoid it like the plague. Yeah, like just um, do not do not go see this movie. It is it is terrible. Um, is an insult to anybody uh, who sees it. Oh, it's, yeah. it. It's like a Don Rickles routine, but you know, not even uh, not even close to funny as that. And I don't really even find them all that funny. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not like it, it, there's a difference between. And obviously, we'll get into the movie, but there's a difference between a movie that takes shots at everyone versus a movie that j- it just makes everyone a stereotype. Yeah, yeah. There's like, no there's no subtlety or cleverness to. It's to yeah. This. It's not like a hey guys, we can all be made fun of. It's like no, you're finding like the worst things, not the worst things, but the the laziest things mm-hmm. and the most hacky, hacky comedy stereotype bullshit, and just digging in. I'm getting into the final thoughts. Yeah, let's just thing. let's. I'm gonna I'm gonna do the rundown. Uh, yeah. Uh, Starring the Rock. Can, can we can we talk about that movie instead? Oh my god, that won't ever be on the show because that movie's fucking great. Okay, all right then. So, all right, Soul Plane uh, stars uh, you know Kevin Hart. Uh, he plays this uh, chap who is uh, he's kind of a kind of a, a kind of a schlub. At least that's way he's portrayed at first, anyways. And an asshole. A bit, yeah. He's a bit um, of an asshole. <laughs> he uh, he goes on. Uh, goes on to a uh, 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 flight. Uh, there is some um, con- inconveniences towards him. Uh, his uh, dog is murdered, um, and so if this he and he gets his ass stuck in a toilet seat. Sues the airline and then buys the airline that he sues, and uh, hilarity ensues. Uh, not really. <laughs> I mean, the attempt at it, I guess. There were, I will say there are a couple of parts in this movie that I did, I I did laugh in spite of myself, but, you know, it's one of those situations where it was an island of reality in an ocean of diarrhea. It's also like, you know, it's 86 minutes of somebody just being the worst. Eventually, like, there's going to be like a 10 second stretch where you're like, well, I guess that wasn't as bad as everything else. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Kinda, kind of like that. So uh, uh, we, we start uh, with our credits now. So late. Boring. Well, uh, this movie, I was, I'm just saying. Uh, uh, the, uh, anybody who's, uh, who's, who's seen this movie knows that this is a, uh, you know, it's a, it's a black filmmaking, a comedy. Uh, with Kevin Hart, Snoop Dogg, Terry Crews is in there. Uh, a plethora of, of, of other character actors. Tom Arnold, a white man, gets top billing. <laughs> he does he really? Well, actually, they do. I did in, notice that in, they did say in, in order, alphabetical alphabetical order. Yeah, but I then, feel that they didn't need to do that. <laughs> no, because they do it for four people's names. Yeah, and then after that, it's just every everyone's other everyone else's name is just plastered onto the screen in groups. Yep, yeah. <laughs> yeah. and uh, so I mean, right right there, I should have been like, this this is not going to go well. <laughs> Starring Tom Arnold, good lord! Not even that. Not even just that. It's starring Tom Arnold. I could, uh, you know, I could almost forgive that if it wasn't for the fact that this, you know, was uh, the 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 the, the in, almost the entire cast is people of color, and yeah. a, a white dude gets top billing. It's it's supposed to be like an all black <laughs> cast, and Tom Arnold is like the token white guy, and he's the lead. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, at least the the lead in the uh, the, the, the billing, credits. anyways. You yeah. definitely get more money, by the way, for being top of the billing uh, in the credits. That's why so many people push for like uh, having their name before the title because that actually okay. pays more than if you're like after that or something like that. Oh, that's a interesting tidbit. Because it's a tidbit that's interesting. Yep. Um. So that aside, um, we actually meet uh, the guy who's supposed to be the I guess the hero uh, of this. Uh, yeah, Kevin Hart, who um, this movie aside, I actually think is very funny. I go hot and cold on him. I, I like a, a good portion of his movies. Mm-hmm. I will say, especially you know if he's you know, doing something with The Rock, I do enjoy that. He's pretty funny with him. Yeah, uh, so he is uh, on his on his way uh, to catch flight. He's got his uh, his little dog with him. He gets to the he gets to the gate uh, to go in at the airport, and the uh, the fella who is 
running the i guess he's he's supposed to be like the i would he be like the head steward like the person who sees you onto the jetway yeah i don't he won't I, let him I onto the no plane because he says the dog's too big and you have to check the dog and it's a dog he could fit in his hand because he's well, here's the here's one of the first jokes, Nathan. Yeah. This guy has big old thick glasses, mm-hmm. and because of that, he thinks that dog is big. Which, if that's the case, then why isn't he terrified? Because everyone would look like giants. Well, that's what I'm saying too. Like, I mean, he, it, it, Kevin Hart is legitimately holding the dog. Isn't he holding it under his arm? Yeah. Like, yeah. How how could he think that a, a, a regular sized man? A regular sized man, not Kevin Hart size, but a regular sized man could hold a Doberman pincher in their arm, like under the crook of their arm. I'm just saying that's the kind of humor that we're we're in for. Oh, we give him better to come. Yeah. Uh so knowing that he has to check the dog, they put the dog in a uh a, the luggage carrier that you get for dogs and just huck him out the door. Oh, we get that hilarious <laughs> off screen <laughs> dog yelp. Yep. Classic and, comedy. And uh, the, uh, of course, the, you know, he's, I guess, I guess what the movie is trying to set up is that the fact that all these, you know, airlines and stuff are like, they're they're super, super duper bland and nerdy and stuff because they're watching, like, the mo- the in-flight movie is the, the Yaya Sisterhood. And um, the yeah. they have, like, uh, Stroganov for... Which like I've really never, bad food. Never had on an airplane. <laughs> no, no. I do. And Kevin Hart, by the way, at this point of the movie, anyway, I'm not saying all throughout, but when he's on the plane, he is an asshole. Like he's oh. sniffing other people's food. Yeah, he's, he's like weird for sure. <laughs> singing loud. He's yelling. He's talking. He's he's farting. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and so uh, of course, uh, the 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 when the Stroganoff comes into play, uh, when they start handing out the uh, the in-flight meals, uh, they come around. Uh, chicken and Stroganoff are the uh, uh, are the choices, and wouldn't you know it, the the lady sitting next to him, she got the last chicken, so Aww. he's he's stuck to have Stroganoff. It it does not look good. Um, I mean, it's airplane food, so I mean that's always a a joke that airplane food isn't that good. Uh, mm-hmm. but Stroganoff in and of itself is. You know, it's it's really something that you have to cook and then eat prepared fresh. It's not something you want to have as like a, a congealed, ready to go meal. So it it looks gross and it's it's full of disgusting oil and and it looks just. But he eats down, thinks it's great, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But then of course the stroganoff kicks in, and uh, he has to go to the bathroom. Okay, Nathan. I know that there was farting earlier, but if you tell me there was pooping, I might have to. I might have to put my knee back into place from slapping it so hard. Boy, howdy! Uh, I feel that the amount of uh, pooping uh, that old Kevin Hart did in this scene would have actually uh, consumed him. He would have been like an implosion type of thing. Like it just, you should have seen the top of his head kind of suck down as as all of his body weight is pushed out his anus because <laughs> that's how much pooping he does in this scene. It's and just then proceeds so... to get his ass stuck in the toilet seat. Yeah, and I mean, it's just so pointless for movies to even attempt scenes like this. You're never going to top the one in Dumb and Dumber. It's like the only hilarious one, really. Well, so far. I mean... It, I, I dream for the future, Brendan. Maybe if Edgar Wright makes a movie with a bunch of fart jokes, it'll be funny, because he'll probably find a good way to do it. Yeah, and he just uh, sets it to like just the right soundtrack, <laughs> so it syncs up just so. <laughs> oh, perfect. Baby Driver 2. <laughs> Baby poops. <laughs> uh, so, okay, so because he is stuck and trying to flush, it, it, it throws off the mechanics of the airplane, and they have to, uh, they, they're, they're, the idea is for them to, to jettison the, the tanks, um, but they end up jettisoning the luggage, of course. So, Which the w- flight attendants have access to, by the way. Yeah, I guess. So, while he is stuck in the in the lavatory, I and I've never been in a plane that has a uh, a, a window in it. In the plane, anyways, like a, like in the lavatory. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, right. no, no. Of course not. Right. But uh, he is, and uh, because he he sees his dog get killed, well, <laughs> sucked up into the into the into jet. The, 
Jet which I'm, I'm surprised at the uh, at the restraint at this gag, not to make like <laughs> blood go everywhere or something. <laughs> I think that would have been. I think that would have been just a, a bit, a bit too much. It's pretty <laughs> harrowing when you think of this scene, though, because like, you know what I mean? Like, if you place this in the world, he went onto a plane, his dog was sucked up into a jet engine, and then he was taken away, sc- like screaming and crying about how they killed his dog. Like, so this this stuff, this I'm not to this level, this insane level, obviously, but like yeah. this shit has happened at real airlines, like uh, airport, um, you know, employees handling things the way they shouldn't be handling them, and people's like animals have died or got lost yes uh and the 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 lesson in that is uh next time uh leave your pets home they don't know where they are ever so they don't care if they go to hawaii but also like (laughs) airport employees do your job (laughs) that too that too but i mean i i feel that both and we're gonna just move on we're gonna move on here because after all this, like you said, uh, uh, poor Kev, is, he's carted away when they, they do land. And he's screaming about how they killed his dog. And of course, he was stuck in the, 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 bat, uh, in the toilet. So we, we cut to the, uh, the courtroom where he is, he is suing uh, the, the airlines. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, the, the, you know, the, prosec- or the, the, the lawyer for the airlines is trying to make him look like a, a money grubber. Um, and even though his like, dog died, his dog died. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> the, they first, of course they bring up the fact that he was, he's an entrepreneur who has never made any money on any of his businesses or anything like that. And that's, I think that's the crux of their argument. That's, pretty um, much it, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so he gets to give, he gets to give a speech, um, in the in the courtroom which you know sways the jury and he's awarded like infinity billion dollars yeah and he tell and, and he and he meets up with his cousin method man uh, and my my note for that was 100 million dollars for a dog <laughs> uh, emotional distress i don't know uh, it was his it was his support dog yeah uh, well let's not forget the uh, emotional distress he was nearly sucked out of a toilet in an airplane. So yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on. He didn't yeah. get to have chicken stroganoff. I mean, that's forty mil right there. <laughs> so we kind of, I guess we we flash forward uh, to um, months. Uh, about a, was it about a year later? I don't even think they said. I I almost feel like they did, but I'm not positive. Oh. So I'm not going to pin it to a year or anything. Not going back do, to check. Right. I I would say you know probably at least a year to you know to to. to to buy the airline and then retrofit the planes with all the stuff that he retrofits it with. This is the very, very first uh, flight for them. Um, of course, it's the airport, and uh, this is where our, I guess, A story and B story f- first cross over because we get to meet uh, Tom Arnold, his trophy girlfriend, because I don't believe they're married. No, not yet. Your f- it could be your future mother, he says to his son. Yeah. Who is uh, dressed almost exactly like him? Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, of course, his creepy. his uh, precocious daughter, who we are led to believe at first is promiscuous, but she's only trying to wind her dad up, like yeah. get him mad. Per, you know, ter- I got this... one like that. So, <laughs> not the <laughs> promiscuity this... part, but just winding winding me up to get me mad. So, yeah, we we have this back and forth too, where they're like, where she's like. Or he goes, uh, you can't, you can't do anything. You're 17. She's like, I'm 18, and that'll come back later in the unfortunate way, <laughs> right? But we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll move on to uh, first. We see is uh, now. I gotta take a look at this because there's there's I, I didn't take a lot of notes. I just have some some uh, stuff here about uh, there was an old lady who was uh, working for him, uh, but she was playing Tekken. Is that what it is? Okay, I yeah, I, she, I didn't know. I wrote down some Mortal Kombat something something or other. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it was Tekken. Yeah, because they're like, um, she's old. It's gonna get take her a while. Yeah, cut to the screen in front of her, and she's playing a video game. Yeah, yeah. I did laugh at this. Tom Arnold and his son, as I said, are both dressed exactly the same. They're coming. I think they're coming home from their vacation, mm-hmm. and they've got their uh, souvenir, their paraphernalia that they got at one of their. Uh, places they visit well visited while they were on vacation so both him and his son are wearing a hat that says cracker land and i actually yeah. did get a bit of a laugh out of that <laughs> i th- i think it would have been fine if they didn't have him later say 
Didn't you have fun at Cracker World? Remember <laughs> Cracker World? Get it? Because we're white. By the yep. way, Tom Arnold's name in this movie is Elvis Honky. Honky. Well, H-U-N-K-Y. yeah, but, <laughs> I mean, but, but yeah, but that's also the joke. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So because the old lady was playing Tekken, uh, they couldn't get. Their, their flight was uh, canceled or delayed or something like that. But the long and short of this is, or the short and long of it is, depending on how long you or how you want to take that, they have to get a, a flight switched over uh, to another airline, and it just happens to be Kevin Hart's NWA Airlines. What? <laughs> and uh, it's Flight 069. Flight 069 at Terminal X. Like, just piling them on. <laughs> yeah. And so, they're... they're before they are whisked away uh, to Terminal X, uh, that's when uh, Tom Arnold has the argument with his daughter about her being, you know, 17, or she's like, I'm going to be 18, that sort of thing. And she starts listing off all the things that she's going to do when she's 18, uh, uh, like including having sex and all the various ways that she's going to do it. And um, at one point she says ear jobs. Mm. which I was like, oh, I don't really know how the mechanics of that would work. You'd believe a have to have a really a big ear or a, or a small penis. I mean, <laughs> believe a rusty trombone is mentioned at some point. Yeah. I have heard of that though, but the, uh, it's the, yeah, it's the, the it's the ear job thing that I, I find incredibly odd. And it, actually he, he says to his, I think his trophy girlfriend that, you know, that she just, she just won't listen. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, maybe it's because she can't hear because of all the ear jobs. <laughs> maybe it's just like licking the inside of someone's ear. I don't. Yeah, no. See, I don't. That doesn't. No, maybe. You know, but you know, that's a thing. Because it's well, I mean, you know, <laughs> if, if you can do uh, you it, know, it's a thing. A rim job involves running your tongue around something too. So I, maybe, I guess that could be it. Yeah. I I would still rather talk about all this disgusting sex stuff than Soul Plane, <laughs> but Soul Plane. Yeah. When she, after she does that, Tom Arnold and like his son get all embarrassed, and then he's like, they pretend that they're on punked, and I'm like, oh my yeah. god, what at a reference, it, eh? <laughs> I mean, at the time, it, it it was a reference for the time, but man, it, yeah. it's so fucking dated now. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but no, Nathan. Next, I think we cut to um, I don't know, but that's the first, but it, it's it's two of the the biggest stereotypes in this movie is the TSA workers. Yeah, and 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 they actually. It's weird because they um, not only are they they, they they you know doing the stereotype on the um, uh, TSA workers, but you're also uh, you know kind of stereotyping in on those you know like just catty women mm-hmm. and who who would ra- would rather just chat back and forth at work than actually do the work. And then of course when somebody calls them out, they've got to do their work super aggressively. Yeah. Oh, and they also uh, like Monique straight up like. Stops some guy, says, you look like Denzel, and brings him into a room and violates <laughs> he him. He does not look like Denzel. <laughs> he's, no. the, he's, the, uh, he's the shift sergeant from The Rookie. Oh, shit. Uh, you know what I just thought of? Maybe maybe um, those big, thick glasses are actually Monique's. And that's why that guy, when he wears those glasses, it makes everything <laughs> fucked up because they're not his prescription. Because they're not his prescription. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cut scene that, that would have made this movie, just would have tied it together and made everything's perfect would've sense. Perfect. This would have won comedy of the year. Worth guaranteed. a watch. Yeah. Best picture. <laughs> um, I do think it's funny when she's, uh, there's there's one dude who's coming through the, through the metal detector and uh, he's not tall in stature, uh, but he's dressed... In his his full on uh, gangster regalia, he's got like the he's got the hat, the the, the cross necklace, uh, the, you know the, the the clothes. He looks spot on, but you could like put him in your pocket. <laughs> and she calls, she says, you, "You look more like five cent than fifty cent, or something oh, like that." Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was her, all right. F- followed up by the hilarious joke of him em- emptying all his uh, metal stuff into a tin and i'm like oh you get it guys because black people love bling <sighs> it's it really is an unfortunate <laughs> oh and then we I, get a cameo carl yes. malone <laughs> the most like pointless cameo i well it's it is the it, well 
it is, but it also isn't because it does put up um, Tom Arnold to his character to be a complete doofus who doesn't know anything about anything because he went to high school with Carl Malone yeah. in this cinematic universe, uh, and uh, but never followed up afterwards. And uh, the story being, of course, Carl Malone is like one of the greatest basketball players, you know, of all time. Um, fight me, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> He, this guy has no, he has no idea who he is, doesn't realize that his, uh, you know, his former high school basketball teammate went on to be one of the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. Uh, and of course he says, you never passed me. How do you know how, how bad I sucked? And he's like, in these, he said, cause, cause I was the black guy. He's like, no, because you're terrible. It's like. I'm pretty sure the joke here is that, of course, it's because he's the black guy who went to like a predominantly white school. But like, and, and like, isn't that like, isn't that crazy though? The Carl Malone is like you, you. I just thought you were super racist all these years, <laughs> right? Like, Jesus. <laughs> Uh, he was so, so excited any. to see him too. <laughs> he's he like, was. Hey, man. Well, it's like, good friends from high school haven't seen each other in a while. <laughs> Remember when you were racist to me every day in gym? Nope, can't oh, say I do. Jeez. But you know what they say, the, the guilty don't feel guilty, they learn not to. <laughs> Speaking of racist though, uh his his um trophy girlfriend starts getting some real racist uh, uh nerves at the airport. Uh and then this is the the first uh we get of uh of, I don't know, MC Fresh Daryl. Oh. Like his son shows up, he is he's immediately he has changed out of his, you know, Tom Arnold costume. And he's got like a tracksuit and the the tennis hat, mm. uh, and of course he's just fully right into it. Uh, which, you know, that's one of those things where you're like, yeah, you know what? There's a stereotype for a reason in this situation because I see that a lot. Mm. He looks like a tall Jamie Kennedy. He's just that's... like yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's little little cultural appropriation junior. Yeah, and the the well the reason we didn't say this the reason why he was able to do that is because. Uh, Terminal X, which is actually uh, Malcolm X Terminal, mm -hmm. because we see the sign when we come in, is not only just a terminal where you, you wait for your flight and there might be a Cinnabon, but there's like, this place has like a foot locker, there's like a, you know, there's uh, all kinds of different places to, you know, eat. Of course, they're all super stereotyped. I think one of them was Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Yeah, and then there's a 99 cent store. Right. Um, and so, of course, you know, they're, they're kind of in awe of that. But we don't really get to to uh, get into that too, too much uh, because what happens next? Well, this, okay, we already mentioned uh, Monique assaulting the guy. But after yes. that is uh, when they go onto the plane and we meet the flight attendants. Uh, mm -hmm. Sofia Vergara, who we've talked about once before. She was in that Medea, yes. Medea movie where she went to jail for 10 minutes. Um, right. And Which is now streaming on Tubi if anybody's interested. I mean, <laughs> really, really fun. Yeah. Fun, fun flick. Sure, yeah. It's, it was better than the other one, I'll say that. Um, I had so much fun talking about the other one, though. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sofia Vergara, um, the other girl, I'm not sure her, uh, who that is, but um, the guy is um, in a much better movie with an all black cast called Undercover Brother. He played Smart Brother, Gary Anthony Williams. If I could, if I could, if just, just, what, like I remember us talking about this kind of off before about how there are some really good and well made uh you know black comedies undercover brother is a perfect example of it this is not yeah and I exactly. know it's a hot take I know we're probably gonna hate on this get hate on this because uh we don't like this movie but I just can't get behind this movie hardly at all I mean I'm I, I guys just Google what Spike Lee said about the movie and think about that for just a few minutes because I think he right. made some really good points. So, yeah. So, wh where were we at here? Oh, great. So, the, the flight attendant. So, yeah. Smart brother from Undercover Brother, Gary Anthony Williams. He mm -hmm. is... Um, I don't know if you you can tell this by watching the movie, but he's our gay character. And so much so that his name is Flame. Flame. Like, you know what's not funny? A funny name. Ever. Yeah. Like, hardly ever. It's... Mm. <laughs> I don't think that's like his legit name though. I I think the the other one is the legit name that is like okay, yeah, we get it and it stopped being funny before it was even funny. It's his is I feel it's just like a nickname. 
that's yeah. been kind of given to him, right? Which is which also not good because yeah. he's a gay dude. Don't nickname that somebody that. <laughs> you do, yes, no, you don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, they're just chatting and and um, they're all just like chatting about like their love life or whatever. And you know, we get a lot of him like stroking a wine bottle and. Talking about, mm-hmm. ooh, I could reach that that coin that that thing that went up. Or, or Sophia Vergara says she kicked her boyfriend in the balls so hard, one of the balls like flew up inside him, and he's like, ooh, I'll go find it. Like, oh, you get it, guys? He's a gay man. <laughs> yeah, because the, all they think about is is sex with other men. All, they don't always. have any other interests about you know being like individuals who no. you know maybe like you know hockey or or you know. Uh, playing video games or something like that. They, they can't be normal. No, they can't no. be. That's and, just... And, and if you're straight... God damn um, it, this fucking movie. If you're straight, their only mission is to convert you. <laughs> Jesus Christ. According uh, to this movie, too. Just saying. Mm. Um, yeah, and then... Okay, and then they're they're wondering about the pilot. Like, Method Man's like, where's the pilot? I got the pilot. I got the pilot. He's showing up. And that's when Snoop Dogg walks in. Um, by the way, Snoop Dogg uh, was uh, filmed... Did his parts in this movie in five days. That doesn't surprise me in the least. <laughs> he probably wanted to be done with it as soon as possible. I feel that this was a this was a paycheck. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're talking about the guy who was in the movie Bones, not not the television series, but the, the movie where he's kind of like the crow, but a pimp version. Oh, oh my god, we need to do that one. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, his we are inter- also introduced to his co-pilot, who is, name is. Uh, Gaiman, but everybody calls him Gay Man, <laughs> right? Because because mm-hmm. it sounds like a gay man, right? And of course, because of that, he has to be um, he has to be super defensive about oh, yeah. it. Um, you know, absolutely denying it that he's you know gay. He's just gonna be like, oh no, it's 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 actually Gaiman. Yeah, That's no, because he's like, oh, I'm not a gay man. Like, I don't have, I don't fuck other men in bedroom. In, oh my god, b- uh, beds the or whatever. Dialogue. I like pussy. This... I like all the pussy all the time. And then even uh... Snoop Dogg, he has some line where he's like that fruity fuck. Just tried. To oh hit yeah, on me. no, there's there's some, oh. yeah, there's some really bad stuff in regards to that in this movie. Uh, we do meet uh, a blind John Witherspoon, although not totally sure if he is. I feel like they they forgot to film the scene where it turns out he was never blind. Yes, because that's de- definitely what it was, right? But, no, but I, if they did, they would have had to cut that. Oh, they would have had oh. to cut it out because of the part at the end, oh, which we'll, 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 well, I'm sure we'll cover it. There's I'm two, sure I won't forget about pro- it. Probably two scenes they would have had to cut out, actually. But yeah, yeah, because there's times where you're like, oh no, he obviously has to be legitimately <laughs> blind for this yeah. to be happening. And I, I, I had that emotion. Okay, so anytime anyone showed up in this movie that I liked, which was a lot of people, I think there's a lot of great people in this movie. But anytime it happened, I had a, like a teeter totter emotion. I was like, oh, they're in this though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like Snoop Dogg was the biggest one. Like, hey, Snoop is in Soul Plane. Yeah. Uh, and he, uh, after they get their introductions done in the, in the cockpit, he, of course, I believe he orders a quadruple cognac. Mm. Um, he's the pilot. So, I mean, that's, I suppose, it, you know what? Uh, you, I, I gotta say this. I will have to give them some, um, credit for making that joke in this case being about the fact that, you know, he's just supposed to be doing a, a job clear headed mm-hmm. and he's not, you know, that's, I get that's. That's that's no. That's about it for. <laughs> I'm tell- because because any any goodwill that 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 um, you know, joke got from me was immediately lost after the next scene where we meet uh, a passenger uh, who was in oh. uh, who was in like who was in oh he's in uh, the low class section because there's first class and then there's like low class mm-hmm. and of course low class looks like a subway. Uh, oh, I mean, and, not not the restaurant where you eat fresh, but the you know the the pea soaked trains that you take under cities. Well, they even have like the um, the straps that you hang on to there. Yeah, it, yep, yeah. and the uh, of course the the monitors for the the safety videos and stuff, rather than being you know just regular uh, you know flat screens or something like that, um, or at the very least nice televisions. They're like janky seventies tube TVs. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, uh, and oh, and the 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 overhead bins are pay lockers. Yeah, which Tom Arnold yeah. does, and then he just turns his head like, "You crazy people!" Like we might as well have said yeah. that. Yeah, 
Um, the kid makes a fucking UPN joke. Oh, I must have missed that. They one. walk in and like all like they walk into low class, and the first thing he says upon seeing everyone is like, "This is some UPN shit," and I'm like, "Oh my god!" Uh, also, okay. a joke that like <laughs> doesn't again really dates <laughs> really dated, dates the movie yeah. UPN. <laughs> yeah, well, you know it it made its way into a, a couple of. Uh, uh, cartoons and and television shows at the time too. I remember they they make a UPN joke in the in the Clerks cartoon, mm. one of the six episodes that that exists of that. <laughs> yes. um, okay, so uh, we're really the reason why we're getting to this part and why I said any uh, joke that may have gotten some good credit out of me previously is immediate loss because uh, there's a pi- there's a passenger getting on the plane um, who is Middle Eastern. And he serves to be there for this joke and this joke alone. We never see this character ever again in the movie. He serves no point to the plot whatsoever. Uh, of course, as the camera's panning down, because you're seeing all through this from his point of view, everybody's like, <gasps> oh, they're all super worried. And of course, they finally do the reveal. And he, you know, he looks around and he sits down. Of course, he sits down and, and Monique and her co-worker uh, show up saying, you know, we're feds now and and uh, they're going to get they got their eye on him and, and all this stuff. Because, of course, you know, he's, he's Middle Eastern. That's that's the joke here. Yeah. You get it. Remember 9-11? Yeah. It's yeah. it's oh, man. Because like the whole thing is like, you know, we just we're, we're just going to keep an eye on him just in case. I'm like, yeah, that's not profiling or anything like that. Sh- certainly not. Mm-hmm. That just that's just yeah I get that. Why do I have a note? And again, if anybody has seen this movie, you'd know some sort of inebriant is required to sit through it. I have a note that says Nano was great in the sack, and I don't know why I wrote that. Oh, I have no idea. Yeah, or Nana says great in the sack. Oh yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. So there's this couple that keep that want to fuck everywhere in the plane, like they just keep going to new places to have sex. Yeah. And she made a comment something about like um Nana said a man who's great in the sack is something or other. I don't remember the line, but that's definitely something that she said and then the guy was okay. like ho 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 and we're all laughing oh. and holding our guts. So my je- my note here is because I was confused as to anybody's Nana talking to anybody and saying, you know, a fella who's great in the sack. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We don't get time to really mull that, uh, that whole uh, psychological scarring over because we get a flashback where, uh, right. because Kevin sees, or Kevin. That's Kevin, Kevin Hart. Hart. It's Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart sees uh, an old, not an old flame, not the the steward, but uh, actually an old girlfriend. And, and who um, the fuck cares about this story? Like seriously, it's it. You know what? It seemed really tacked on. It was so tacked on that I think it's only mentioned in like three scenes. Although she gets a fair bit of screen time because of it, so kudos to her yeah. for getting getting a tacked on story uh, ramped up into a really good paycheck. <laughs> yeah. Of course, because he sees her, he has this flashback about, you know, the, the, the night that they broke up. Mm-hmm. But, oh, and this this thing that calls me so much is that why can't we get the whole flashback at that time? Because we have to relive this flashback again later. Because, Nathan, you can't know the twist yet. Yeah, we, right. we also got to get the hilarious joke of every time Kevin Hart's talking, there's like planes flying overhead and shit. So she mm-hmm. can't hear him. And she's like, what? What? And again, we're just rolling the aisles. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's because not only, I mean, because uh, her is his girlfriend uh, or his girlfriend at the time when he goes to break up, but they live like directly over the LAX flight path. So does he as a kid growing up. Mm-hmm. Now, this actually is kind of a, a good, like, uh, it's like, a, again, the island of reality. There is, like, it's a social commentary on the fact that all low-income housing um, for the predominantly black community in Los Angeles was is directly over that flight path. So, like, you're constantly hearing, like, loud-ass engines going off all the time. Mm-hmm. So... It gets one point in uh, in the good column against the gajillion in the oh my god why did I do this? Well, 
Speaking of which, um, I think ne- well, next or right before this or somewhere around the same time, there's a fully produced, and I use that term in the loosest way possible, uh, music video for I'm a Survivor, where the flight attendants are like telling people how to, uh, you yeah, know, how to be safe safety or whatever. Video. And I'm just like, what is this <laughs> bullshit? Like, what am I fucking watching here? There's no jokes. It's just we're literally just watching a fucking music video that looks like it was shot in like 40 minutes. <laughs> there's like two. There's like two camera cuts. This is this is so much the the least offender of all my grievances with this oh, movie. But it's just no. But it it made me even matter than the jokes and the racist stuff at some <laughs> at, in some way because I was like, yeah. now you're just wasting my time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't click over to the special features to watch the fucking soul plane music video. Like I just show the rest of the movie and be done with it. <laughs> uh, so once that's well that I think it's just before or just after that, um the Snoop Dogg and Gaiman um are securing the the cockpit for uh for takeoff. Uh you know, and Snoop is getting his his space, you know, ready getting his stuff out. Um, I think he had a, uh, a Sanford and Son bobblehead. And um, he gets Gaiman to, to lock the cockpit for takeoff. And, of course, the joke, you know, that it's got a billion locks on it, like, you know, an apartment in a shitty area of town would have. Get it? Yeah, get it? <laughs> so, and, of course, the plane has hydraulics. That's the name. I was trying to think of what that was called. The plane was, <laughs> yeah. like, bouncing and stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Again, not not the most uh, uh, offensive joke they could have told. So I mean, I did I did like the 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 I think that one of the next jokes that's coming up is where Flight sixty nine passes by is it Texas Air, and of course the entire plane is filled with uh, rootin' tootin' Texans with cowboy hats and and everything right, and uh, they all lock their doors as the as the plane goes by. Um, we might have a different cut situation here. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't, you didn't catch that scene. My head might have been in my hands at that point. Well, I mean, given the the fact that the music video was <sighs> just before that, you might have still been recovering. I like, from is this that. done? <laughs> what are we? Doing? But that was that was again that was another in the in the good column. I thought that was a legitimately funny joke. Um, uh, you know that you know scared people from the from rural areas lock their doors <laughs> just when somebody drives by them listening to loud rap music or something you know what you know what's a weird joke um to hear in this because you have to remember at the time this was going on the kobe bryant rape trial had just happened or yeah. it was about to happen and uh because there's a line where tom arnold looks at some guy that's sitting next to his daughter and he puts his like hand on her leg or something and he goes easy kobe she's 17 and i'm like Oh, try making a Kobe joke now. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose. Oh, uh, that's I didn't I didn't I didn't catch that one. So uh, fair play to my Texas joke. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. So at this point, uh, Tom Arnold, he's getting, uh, he's kind of getting, you know, he's protective, and he, he, he's, I don't know what he gets up to leave or something, and tells his wife to read one of the in-flight magazines. And so she's looking at the at the magazines. Oh, his, he got to go to the bathroom. That was it. Yeah. Um. So she's reading the magazines, and there's a picture of a guy, uh, on, like a model on the front of the <laughs> fucking magazine, who has a, a dick down past his knee. Mm-hmm. That's and that is that is the joke. That's the joke. And then the kid is like, "I'm gonna go walk around the plane," which is like the laziest thing, to, reason to just get him out of the scene. And then, yeah. yeah, she just, like, goes full on, like, oh, this magazine, i got to find this guy. Because we learn that that guy is on the flight, too. We do, yeah. Um, although there, there's a there's a really fun way, the way Kevin Hart describes him later, which I, I, I did kind of get a laugh out of. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Tom Arnold has to go to the bathroom, and uh, he meets our bathroom attendant. D.L. Uh, Hughley. Played by D.L. Hughley, yeah. Who, by the way, I think is the only one putting effort into the movie. I'm just going to say it. You know I'm gonna say this because it's it, it it like Snoop Dogg's situation. I feel like all these scenes could have been filmed in just a couple of days, and he was one and done. Mm-hmm. So he didn't have time to get exhausted by this script. <laughs> yeah, like nothing he says is funny in the movie, but I'm just saying, like he's he's at, he just seems more like not worn down by, by this. the 
the idea he's there just because just to be the bathroom attendant now i anybody who's ever flown and knows that you know airplane bathroom you know stalls are small uh not this one though it's got a it's got a stall and an attendant who gives out like mints and stuff like that i can't understand why anybody would have like uh but i mean it's obviously this movie's not real so i mean <laughs> It, it's for just, the it's for the sole purpose of doing the joke where Tom yes. Arnold sits down to take a poop and he plays the song "Push It." <laughs> yes, he does, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's when that yeah. dude shows uh. up to like the guy from the magazine starts like romancing his wife who just can't stop <laughs> staring at his dick. <laughs> he actually says, <laughs> he says. That thing's got a face on it, and his his girlfriend replies with, "It might." She going, "It's gonna be, it's gonna be, As her. it's gonna be you her know, face it? on it." You get it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't this the second time we get like a reference to uh, a Middle Eastern character or characters? Because Snoop is like, "This is my flight school. I graduated with." Oh yes, we do. Yeah, he graduated with like the Taliban or whatever. Well, because we find out he was he. He he learned that uh, he learned how to fly in prison mm-hmm. because originally the, Kevin Hart had, be, had was under the belief that he had learned how to fly uh, in the army, right? In the air force, rather. Um, no, he 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 learned it on flight simulators uh, in in a prison. Uh, he we also find out that he is uh, susceptible to air sickness. Yep, because and which which is funny because he's see he's a he's an airline pilot oh. who gets air sick oh because his job is so. to go in the sky again and he gets sick when he goes in the sky kudos to them for not being insensitive to somebody in some way shape or form oh <laughs> with that joke yeah <laughs> although there is a weird insensitive joke but i don't know why it's offensive but it just feels weird because kevin hart comes in and he says he starts like freaking out over all that and then he says mm-hmm. uh he says like snoop whatever gay man and he goes it's gay man and then kevin hart says you gonna be a gay man what how does i don't yeah <laughs> what that's kind like a threat is that <laughs> That, that that's like when uh, your grandmother uh, says something similar in that way. Not about the gay man thing, but just it, it meant not making sense. It's like Nathan, uh, come, you know, clean up your room. But Nan, I'm playing Nintendo. Oh, I'll Nintendo you. I've heard that. Yeah, I heard that one all the like, time. What the hell? What the, that doesn't make any sense. You're Nintendo no. me. How are you? What? <laughs> Just get in here, you know, which which lets you know that Nana didn't have actually a, a really sly, quick wit. Which I, you know, I guess that's what happened to Kevin Hart in this uh, this scene. Um. Oh, what? Else? Oh, there's a re- there's a fun line where uh, you know, Snoop says, you know, about them getting flying. He says he's gonna get them higher than Redmen. At the Source at, Awards. Uh, la- at the Source Awards. Which it, that that line kind of made me <laughs> chuckle, and only because of the fact that I was like, huh, "Method Man's in this movie." Method Man's in this, yeah. <laughs> the alcohol choice uh, is Colt Forty Five or Alize. Yeah. Um, so we get those those hilarious things, and then um, what's funny is Tom Arnold is like, "Can you describe what those are?" And then the kid, I think. Oh, yeah, so he describes it, and then the pilot, yeah, when the pilot makes an announcement, that's when the kid, like, translates it, and he's like, huh, amateurs, and I'm just like, I want to murder this kid. <laughs> uh, we we also get the handing out of the, the in-flight meals. Oh, yeah. um, first class is getting uh, uh, baked potatoes with uh, sour cream chives. Remember that, because that will come into play with John Witherspoon here shortly. Don't worry, we haven't forgotten about him. Uh, they're getting a fantastic, luxurious meal, uh, and of course, uh, low class is getting Popeye's chicken. And you only take one piece and pass it back. Come on, guys! Remember, share two napkins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's funny because yeah. they're 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 supposed to be poor. You you see, right? <laughs> Why do I have disco lemon? I don't know. <laughs> I can't decipher that. <laughs> <laughs> Disco lemon was it, is was not it, a character. <laughs> was it one of the drinks or something? Oh, uh, maybe. I don't know. God, you're pretty. Well, I had to get me- I had to get messed up to see this movie, <laughs> and I, I I had to kind of get messed up to talk about this movie too. So I thought you were yeah. about to say I did mescaline to see this movie. 
No, no, no. I would have. That would have ended super poorly. <laughs> Here's my notes, man. It's just like an orange. <laughs> yeah, this is an orange. Yep, that's right. This movie was sun kissed. <laughs> it was juicy. Let me tell you. Boy, howdy. What, what were they thinking? It was really appealing to me. Oh, my God. <laughs> it, it was a real slice of, of, of cinema verite. Oh, somebody take his masculine away. <laughs> I'm getting. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> uh, you know, but this is pretty much the scene you talked about because John Witherspoon is like still being a huge perv, and he talks about like, oh my, gr- I used to have this girl who got on a trampoline <laughs> oh my and whatever. God. And then, and he's because he's trying to hit on this this uh, very austere lady who's sitting next to him, mm-hmm. and uh, he's he's trying to kind of carouse, but. Obviously, he has to be blind for this to happen. He thinks he's getting to third base, he, but she has gotten up and left, and he is molesting a baked potato. He just, he's he's yeah, he's fingering a potato, which I know the character is supposed to be blind, but is he also stupid? Yes, yes, yes. I don't think a potato feels like a vagina. I'm just gonna put it out and there. And also, I mean, if it, I mean, if that <laughs> pipe, if that. Baked potato is piping hot out of the oven. And he's he's got third degree burns on those two middle fingers. I mean, I'm just that too. And also it, later on, he 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 takes it with him. Like he doesn't realize it's it's sour cream and chives. No, because he says, "Ooh, she puts cilantro on it. She's crazy. She's crazy. I like that or something like that." <gasps> he also, by the way, we should mention he's fingering a potato in his seat and uh, like he ejaculates in his pants. Yes, and which we never to- see him cleaning up. Well, no, he has to, he goes to the bathroom. He just washes his hands. That's all he does. Right. And he, he gets D.L. Hughley to help him out. And, of course, he can't resist sticking his fingers under D.L. Hughley's nose. And that's... he. he he's like... <laughs> D.L. Hughley's like, I don't know what you think you did, but you did not finger anybody. And he's like, what yeah. are you talking about? And he, that's the cilantro. Uh, that's where the cilantro line comes from, because that's him taking a whiff of it again. And he only wanted to wash one hand, if I remember correctly. He doesn't want to wash the the, the stinky pinky hand. He right, says. he wanted to save that for later. I believe was the gist of of what he was saying. It was pretty gross. So it was disgusting. <laughs> um, but you know what? We haven't talked about stereotypes in a while, uh, Nathan, because um, the gay the gay character comes back. Yeah, can we talk about uh, Flame's Asian lover? His Asian lover, and he also. I mean, Kevin, Hart, he has some line about like how he had to go get his stomach pumped or something. And Kevin Hart, of course, has to be like, hey, that's gross. Don't talk to me about that. Ew. And, and then at one point they have the get, they have flame like trying to grind him. And I'm like, stop, stop. Mm. Like it's 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 such a I know this is like a stupid comedy, but that's such a harmful stereotype for like a gay and character. It's just the fact and not even just the fact I mean, even for 2004, that's crazy lazy it's so lazy it's so lazy i had to rhyme it with the descriptor it's crazy <laughs> lazy crazy lazy it's just so like yeah and it's so regressive and like i don't know it's, it's gonna be to... the name of my next band too <laughs> and it'll actually it'll go along with uh how dedicated we are to making an actual album and music just crazy lazy <laughs> we don't do a goddamn thing but it's also like it's also just like I don't know. It rings too true to like real uh, uh, assumptions people make about like you know horrible people make about gay people to be funny. Like it's just like, like you joked about earlier. You know, the, all, all they all they want is to convert you. It's like no, yeah. dude, just shut up. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? They don't give a shit. <laughs> they, they don't care. They really no. don't. They just they just don't. They, and they what they want is they want you not to care as well. Exactly. That's the easiest way to put it. But yeah, he gives him. He gives Kevin Hart like gay best friend advice. You know that that yeah. thing was like you gotta go to her. You gotta you gotta go to that girl and get her back. And none nobody in the theater gives two sweet fucks about this romance. Um, yeah, but, I, um, but we do care about the romance we go back to because this is the two people that are just fucking everywhere. Yes, and they have, they end up in the and bathroom, they got they right? they go into the bathroom. This is the third yeah. scene with DL, and they they're going at it hard, and she wants to like choke him out mm-hmm. to to you know because she she not only does she want to do it all over the plane, but she is crazy kinky. Yep, I mean you know what whatever I mean do your thing, but I mean this is not played for like oh <laughs> this is this is 
played in a mocking way, not a like. Well, you know. I, I think that again, the, it's it's weird that you have to be like. I think the joke here is, but the joke here I think is that is that she is uh she is a, she's sexually dominant that she knows what she wants and that she wants she wants to fuck and it's it's weird because it's again one of the few goods in the good column it's pretty subversive because you think about how women are were normally portrayed in movies especially even up at that point is like any sort of you know assertion um they were either you know they were they were a villain um or they were just like a well even a tertiary villain like you know the, the bitchy friend of the girl the guy is trying to hook up with mm-hmm. you know so i mean this one's actually again a good check in the column because it's uh it, it actually is a, a kind of a fun play on the way things were for the for women then well, and, and even now well you can you can disperse all that goodwill immediately because can i fo- why can i do that following that scene we have Tom Arnold's daughter going into the cockpit and announcing yep. that she's 18, to which Snoop Dogg, I guess, gets a major erection and says basically in so many words, hey, everybody, we're going to have a party, and I guess everybody's just going to go come and fuck this 18-year-old. Let's, <laughs> Run a let's, train on this girl. Yeah, well, let's let's do this. And that, yeah. it's, uh, yikes. Yep, yep, yep. That, that, uh, that really got good check, just got immediately knocked out by... Five or six uh, bad ones. Uh, Snoop, uh, his character uh, takes some mushrooms, uh, which he thinks are you know just magic mushrooms, but turned out to be um, uh, anti ball itch mushrooms. Because they're balls. That's why it's funny. Right, because that they're, they're ball itch m- mushrooms that that Gaiman uh, ha- would put on his nuts and to to stop a, a, a ball itch. And they they were African, so they were lethal. Mm-hmm. This fucking movie. This fucking movie. <laughs> so yeah, he eats. He keeps eating them. Um, but it, it, isn't this where we get our Terry Crews cameo too? Yes, because um, and guys, this sounds all over the place because it is. I mean, it's almost it's it's basically a parody movie, which I always said was going to be hard to cover on this show. We're doing our best. There ain't much of a plot. Just let no. you know. No, and it, and it's no um, like I said, no. I would even I would have rather watched Don't Be a Menace to South Central or Drinking Your Juice in the Hood than watching this. Or I'm gonna get you, sucker. Oh my God, that would have been. We couldn't have talked about that. That's a fantastic movie. It's too good, yeah. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah, it's just Terry Crews here. He's working uh, security at the club that they just uh, opened, I guess, in the airplane yeah. uh, where uh, I think um, uh, Little John is is playing and Big Boy. Yep. Uh, but first we have to have, uh, Terry Crews there who doesn't want to let Tom Arnold in cause he's, he's not on the list. We think there's going to be a really great scene where Terry Crews just punches Tom Arnold right the fuck out. Was hoping. But of course, Terry Crews says, are you ready? Are you ready to take this ass beat? And he's like, I am because that's my daughter in there. And of course this tugs on. Um, you know, Terry Crews' heart, uh, cause his daughters and how much he loves them, which made me wonder if this was a Brooklyn nine, nine prequel. Yep. I wrote down, he just <laughs> went full Terry Jeffries. Yeah. <laughs> it's tugs on his heartstrings. So of course he lets him in, lets him into the club, you know, go get your girl. Oh, that's sweet. There couldn't possibly be, um, a, a negative thing that happens after this to, uh, dissuade all that. Oh, wait, this is the other gay joke coming yep. up. Yep. Because they're looking for Gaiman, the co-pilot. Mm-hmm. He, he left. They can't find him. And and uh, they get on the radio and say, attention, gay man. I've got to go. What does he say? i got to go take a shit, basically. Um, so, uh, so please come up here, and we need you in the cockpit. And you know who hears him say gay man? The gay guy. Every every gay guy in the well, plane. Well, we see him react first, and he smiles, and yeah. then we see all the gay people, including I think I'm not sure what this movie is trying to say, but I think there's supposed to be trans people in there, um, yeah. as well as priests. Hilarious! Ha <laughs> ha! Take that, low hanging fruit. <laughs> really, the thing that really <laughs> sealed it for me though, as like the laziest fucking joke, is that their song choice was Macho Man. Oh yeah, well, I mean, it could have been YMCA, but still, I mean, <laughs> no, but I mean, either one, <laughs> anything like, by the village people would have been just like, come the, on, guys, the fucking hackiest thing, like, come on. 
which by the way was the theme for uh the guy who's no longer the president so that's fun <laughs> so ironic all right uh, th- yeah this is i said yeah uh little john and uh big boy are playing uh and shooting a video we're cutting between that and the bar conversation that tom ronald has with kevin hart mm-hmm. about uh, about his wife uh being infatuated with the model uh, who's on the cover of this magazine? And Kevin Hart apparently knows exactly who he's talking about. And he's like, is he describes him the clothes that he's wearing? And I think he says, "Dick like a tree trunk." Yeah. <laughs> and he says, "Yeah, that's the one." He's like, "Oh yeah, you're never getting her back. You're ne- yeah, you're not getting gone. her back." Have she's you even tried back. to talk to her? And Tom Rawls says, "No, she's still got the the vocal cord damage." Get it? <laughs> <laughs> she blew him and he's got a huge dick we got so. a big dick got in her throat hilarious I'm, I'm laughing now as i say it so i mean obviously begrudgingly into the good column for me it goes um but yeah that's just the basic bullshit thing of like you know uh t- or talk he's basically telling kevin about his you know his relationship with his kids and kevin's talking about his relationship with the girl the girl he likes and they're basically telling each other, be better, and, you know, everything's going to be fine. It's at this point that Snoop Dogg dies, or so we Yes, think. because, well, well, he goes on a real bad mushroom trip, and we think he's dead. Um, oh, we did, we f- forgot that to mention that Kevin Arnold's kid is um, co-directing uh, this music video that they were shooting beforehand. Oh. Yeah, because remember, okay. he's, he, yeah, he was there, he, and, yeah. Yeah, he actually gave advice to the director to oh. put more scantily clad women into the video. And then when that kid does that fucking dance, when he's just shaking his head and his arms and stuff, I'm like, yeah. fuck off. Just absolutely, <laughs> absolutely fuck off. Um, oh, wait, we forgot to mention that Snoop Dogg almost crashes the plane so he doesn't have to pay child support. Right. we got to throw that line in there. Sure. Put that in there. Uh, what do I have? I, okay, and I know the teabagging one because that's, that's where... Um, uh, <laughs> fucking Ke- uh, tom arnold i almost said kevin arnold <laughs> like, you said weird. kevin arnold earlier did i yeah. kevin arnold which is fred savage's character from the wonder years okay um so imagine that when i said that that this was happening to a young fred savage <laughs> uh but tom arnold has the uh has um teabagging explained to him mm. by kevin arnold no kevin, kevin hart. hart there you go <laughs> so imagine Young Fred Savage explaining to you back to I, Tom Arnold. No, I don't like that at all. <laughs> but a- but with the voice of Daniel Stern in his head, t- remembering it. Cause Daniel Turns Stern out did- Tom didn't know what teabagging was, so <laughs> by golly, I told him. And then cut to Fred Savage explaining it. <laughs> Maybe See, we're writing been- a better movie. We're <laughs> writing a better movie. Maybe I shouldn't have been having this kind of conversation with an adult, but who was I to judge? I was a kid. <laughs> And it was the sixties. <laughs> uh okay. Um But the couple that always fucks comes into the cockpit and they're like, Hey, Snoop, do you mind if we fucking hear and the, the joke is like they're hitting turbulence, so it makes Snoop look like so he's he, like nodding and nodding. throwing his hand up yep. and stuff. So they start doing that until they realize that he's dead and they start freaking out. <laughs> At one point, Tom Arnold, so Tom Arnold meets up with his daughter again, and they have a heart-to-heart or whatever, and, you know, we get the reveal because she says, I'm only saying this, like, super sexual stuff to get back at you, to make you uncomfortable, and he says, he says his wife left him for a woman, and then he has a line about, like, you know, your mom doesn't want to be with me anymore, and your mom and Dorothy don't want to be with me at all, and I'm just like, okay, so his wife left him for a woman, and then he said, hey, threesome? (laughs) Oh, God. That's basically what happened there. Uh, oh, um, yeah, because <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he does something to the to the fact that um, I, I'd love to be with I'd love to be with your mom. I'd love to be with your mom and Dorothy. So so they need to find another pilot and Gaiman they find in a hot tub with a bunch of ladies because he's straight. OK, just want you to know. Yeah. And he's in his drawers and uh, he slips getting out of the um, jacuzzi and is dead or knocked out. I don't care. <laughs> wow. <laughs> We're just being honest because I don't think there's evidence of either either one. We don't see him again, so let's, let's no. say he died. Okay. Because <laughs> we, we immediately go, I think next is we go to the scene where uh, Redman and 
uh, he's trying to convince Kevin Hart to jump out of the plane with him. Yes. Because the plane's going down you, because they have no wait, pilot. Wait, wait, did you say Redman? Redman, Redman. You mean, you mean Method Man? No, oh, yeah, you're right, it's Method Man. <laughs> We're high as Redman, and Method Man's in this movie. Right. <laughs> Oof. This movie, man. It's doing a number on me. I don't think this is a rare episode where we both, like, had, like, had hard drinks. <laughs> Usually you, it's usually I got a beer and you got a drink, or you, you got a beer and I got a drink. Yeah, maybe this, maybe this formula is not going to work out. I, you know what? I think it's required for this film. <laughs> it's true. Um, yeah. yeah. So I mean, yeah. So, so so Kevin Hart, Kevin Hart, not Kevin Arnold, not yeah, not Kevin young Hart, Fred Savage. Kevin Hart. Uh, he now is like, no, I'm, I'm not going to jump out, uh, the, the plane with you in this parachute method, man. Uh, I'm going back to the cockpit and I'm going to land this plane and his girlfriend is there and she believes in him. And we have that other part of the flashback that we do where we find out that Kevin, mm. the reason he broke up with her was because he heard her arguing with her dad about going to college. And he's like, I didn't want to hold you back. And, Whatever movie, I don't care. I really don't care. And and she forgives him. Um, yeah, and, and she believes in him. And of course, he goes in and he gets on the he gets on the headset with the tower, and they put him on hold. Uh-huh. right. That's hilarious. <laughs> we also get a line because it all of a sudden the cockpit is just an open door at this point. People are just coming in. At yeah. one point, Method Man was sitting in the co pilot seat, and I was like, "What?" Well, because he 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 had a change of heart. And, no, no, uh, before wanted... this. Before oh, this, yeah. Snoop was just oh, no. flying, and he was just sitting there. <laughs> yeah, because that, that was after Gaiman left, but before yeah. Snoop uh, you know, went on the mushroom trip, he was in, uh, I think he, he was in uh, either selling weed or just smoking up with, with Snoop Dogg. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Monique says she wants to ride the black box to safety. Yes. <laughs> that line actually did. Okay, that was my one, like, huh, moment. <laughs> like it wasn't even a full like a lot th- like a full throated lava. It's just like a huh, yeah, yeah. on tundra. I get it. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> but what wasn't funny is the scene that follows this because Sofia Vergara is like they try to figure out like where everything is and she's like, oh, I know. I used to fuck a pilot. Let me just mm. put myself in the exact positions. Um, and it'll be hilarious because everyone's going to be uncomfortable and it's going to look like I'm getting fucked by everyone and then I'll know where the controls are. And... She's finding all the switches to engage the, the autopilot. And, Method Man and... starts licking her leg at one point. <laughs> well, yes, yes, because he's he's getting into her pretending to have sex with an imaginary pilot in the cockpit. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we do have, we do have a, 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 a early cell phone joke uh, where the... Uh, the airplane mode on someone's cell phone nearly causes a crash. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah. that's just a myth. Beep, and then the plane immediately goes down. Yeah. There's also um, that couple that fucks everywhere. They're now fucking outside on the wheels. On the landing gear. On the landing gear, Which, yeah. I mean, you know what? If if Arnold Schwarzenegger can lower himself from it and then jump out into a watery marsh and survive, they can fuck on landing gear while the <laughs> plane lands and still survive. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't think they're, like, <laughs> made of muscle and from Austria, though, so they might have a problem. East Germany. He was from East Germany in that movie. <laughs> oh, I was referring to the real person. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> Not the character John Matrix. <laughs> right. So, so, so Kevin Hart yeah. manages to land the plane. And, and, um, and, by the way, this girl that he's into was engaged to someone else the whole time, and she just, like, yes. takes the ring off, and she's like, I'm yours. Yeah, with no... No soul searching involved. No, you know, wondering how this is going to affect her fiance, his feelings, the life they have built together because they are they are engaged to be married. We're not talking about I've been seeing one someone for a couple of months. We didn't even meet the guy, right? So I mean, <laughs> he could be absolutely ruining this guy's life who believes this girl is his soulmate. And then she's just dishing the ring for some guy who, you know, thought he was doing something noble, what, a, a half a decade ago or something? Yeah. And they land in Central Park, so the joke there is that someone steals their rims. Uh, um, yeah. And he, uh, we get the, uh, the, you know how expensive 84-inch rims are. Mm-hmm. Uh, we did also, uh, we did fail to mention, because we, we mentioned some of the interior 
uh, retrofitting they did for the plane, but there was also uh, there were spinner rims right. on all the landing gear because mm-hmm. they, you know, get it because it's blinged out. You get it. Uh, yeah. Um, there's another, and then and then one more gay panic panic joke for the road because uh, John Witherspoon is like standing there and he uh, mm-hmm. he says like, "Ooh, I smell you, baby," and then of course it's flame. And then John Witherspoon immediately feels his neck for an Adam's apple and starts like freaking out and panicking. So it's like that and also like Flame like being like, I'm going to trick this blind guy into having sex with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 Listen, SNL did a sketch like that in the 80s where John Lovitz was a a blind guy and Steve Gutenberg was like a gay man and he kept trying to trick him into having sex with him. Guess what sketch has never aired in repeats? That one. Oh, really? That's (laughs) that's a fun... Fun little interesting tidbit. Um, so okay, so now that they've landed in Central Park, not a LaGuardia or a JFK, uh, we uh, we get our we get aftermath stuff. Mm-hmm. Method Man ended up opening a, a strip club airline. Yep. Monique um, and Tom Arnold hook up, and I'm like, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> right. She calls him a white Denzel. White and I was Denzel. Like, yes. She it, no one has ever said that about Tom Arnold. But don't forget, she thought the sergeant from the rookie was a, just Denzel. Period. And then he, and then he calls her Black Holly Berry. Yeah. Uh, and then of course we find out that Tom Arnold's uh, son uh, went on to direct uh, music videos, but no one has seen him since he worked on that Michael Jackson video. Get it? Because of the because people thought he touched kids for a while. Remember that? Yeah. And then, oh, Snoop! Snoop is not dead. It turns out, and mm. he he wakes up though, and all his shit has been stolen. And he's like, oh fuck! And then the credits. No, he makes he makes a something. He makes a crack about Jet Black. But about Jack Black? No, Jet. <laughs> I was like jet jet black. I was like that'd be such a weird joke to make. No. Man, I feel like yep. Jack Black up in this bitch. And I think it's uh, it's supposed to be a, you know, obviously it's it's a, there's a couple of layers to this joke. Um Jet being uh, you know, magazine. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, Jet Black when people refer to something that is a very very black um in that, you know. So it ends on again a, a layered yet lazy joke and really honestly a pun if you will t- yeah and and really honestly there's no plot in this movie to speak no of. it's no you could feel they were definitely going for more of a um scary movie but one of its several sequels i mean vibe. they're they think it's airplane but it's it not. is it is not <laughs> it is no. not and even airplane like airplane is a very funny movie but if those same jokes were made in in that movie today i they would have to remove some of it like some of it you go back and you're like ooh okay <laughs> yeah. 1980 um yeah. but that movie oh my but but 90% of that movie holds up to this day so yeah, yeah. um so. so 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 nathan um this is where we usually run down the rating so i'll just say what is your rating and why is it avoid like the plague <laughs> you are correct to assume that uh it is it, it is avoid like the plague because it is lazy um almost offensive to its core mm. um and i, I just oh, fuck woefully unsubtle uh it, it's it's as subtle as you know a wrecking ball that miley cyrus comes in like <laughs> <laughs> like it's it's that yeah uh if you want uh you know if you want a better movie to watch um like we, we mentioned undercover brother i'm gonna get you sucker i'm gonna get you sucker even i would even recommend don't be a menace to south central while drinking your juice in the hood over this movie the first the first scary movie better than this yes the first scary movie, way better than this um or and if you're looking for maybe not necessarily the satire aspect but you know maybe a, like just a, a straightforward comedy um on you know D- death at a funeral the remake with chris mm. rock yeah um i'm also gonna say um <laughs> it, tales from the hood yeah tales from almost just about any any movie in the history of black cinema 
over this movie. And even another movie with some slightly problematic homophobic stuff in it, but Hollywood Shuffle is better than this too. Yeah, but again, so. product of its time. Well, that's what I mean. At least that movie yeah. can say, well, it was made in the 80s, whereas this was made in 2004. Which I, a lot of the a lot of the gay stuff was still perfectly that no one batted an eye at that at the time. If you well, not correctly. not not publicly anyway. It didn't have any repercussions mm. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, that's what I mean. Yeah. You know, and you know, thankfully things are more different now. Yeah, thankfully we're being a little. And I, I'm guessing your uh, your your reason why it's a void like the plague for you is just a carbon copy of what I have just said. I would say it's worth a watch um, if you're the you devil. You fucking liar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> April Fruits was a couple weeks ago, bud. <laughs> worth a, worth I would a say watch. it's worth a watch if you're secretly Jeffrey Dahmer and still alive. I want you to watch this over and over again, <laughs> you fuck. <laughs> no, it's terrible. This movie's it's awful. It's fucking terrible. Awful. Avoid like the plague. Yeah. It's a hot garbage mess fire bullshit. Asshole cock. Um, I think <laughs> I don't know what happened to be randomly <laughs> developed Tourette syndrome. <laughs> this, this movie, this movie, man. But we'll be right back. We're gonna take a brief break, hear from our sponsors, and we will return. What were they thinking? And we're back. Yes, we are back. Oh boy! It's... Well, now that we've talked about uh, Soul Plane, Nathan, it's time for the low haiku. What is the low haiku? Uh, the low haiku uh, this week is actually a contractual obligation that has us talking about this movie even longer. Uh, in, however, in a very brief format, seventeen syllables. Oh, okay, that that, that works for me. Okay. Um. All right. Well, uh, Nathan, would you uh, like to begin? Sure, sure. <clears throat> Soulless is this plane, flying into damnation. This should shame us all. This is one of the few times where I have actually gone with serious poetry um, <laughs> for this thing. Cause that's, that's, that's where we need to go. It might have happened twice here. <clears throat> okay. Some stereotypes. Gay panic out the wazoo. It's just not funny. You're good. I, I do find it intriguing that you used that gay panic out the wazoo, considering the wazoo is term slang, term euphemism for the anus. I might have subconsciously done that, and then because I realized immediately after I wrote it. <laughs> but I want to soul. We're out of here. Get out of here with your. You know, your serious poetry and whatnot. It's, oh, God, we still got to keep talking about this movie. <laughs> well, kind of. <laughs> Nathan, yeah, I know. We, But we did talk about this movie, but what do we always say? <sighs> well, we always say... Don't take a word for us. So yes, that's right. Don't take our word for it. Nathan, what are the critics saying about Soul Plane? Well, the critics um, gave it 18%, which seems high. Like 18% of critics said, this is a pass. Out of 101 reviews, so almost literally 18 out of 100 enjoyed this movie. One of which is probably Armand White. What about the audience score? The audience gave it a 51 Yikes. out of over 50,000 ratings. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the positive spin here. That means around 25,000 people didn't like it. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, let's dive in. Let's dive into these reviews here. Um, my first one is going to be Jamie Russell from BBC.com. And uh, Jamie Russell okay, says, "Let's let's get let's get the British guys take on, <laughs> yeah. on black filmmaking." Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> Come back, the Wayans brothers. All is forgiven. Even scary movie two. Okay. One out of five. <laughs> still, actually, scary movie two. That was still not the worst scary movie. <laughs> yeah. No, well, yeah. No, wasn't there like a fifth one or some bullshit? 
Yeah, anything after the second one is just unwatchable. <laughs> Kevin Carr from Fat Guys at the Movies. <laughs> That's sight after my own heart. <laughs> That's clogged uh, with cholesterol. Tries to do too much and fails two out of five. Okay, so here's something we talked about, uh, Nathan. David Newsare of Real Film Reviews says, It's hard not to be offended by a sequence in which an Arab man boards the airplane, much to the shock and horror of everyone around him. And that review is not a retrospective review. That was from September 28, 2004. Yeah, that was when the movie came out. So there you go. One of the reviews has okay. a swear word because it's all like asterisked out. Yeah, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna give a a, a guess at this one because it's Richard Klein, and I'm looking at it and I'm doing I'm counting the number of asterisks <laughs> or asterisks, uh, and I think it is a shit eating style of humor mm. that might have seemed funny in theory, but virtually nothing sparks on the str- screen. And that's from Richard Klein from Shadows on the Wall. Shadows on the wall. <laughs> Like a dog without a bone, an actor <laughs> on alone. All right. Um, okay, well, this is an odd... This, I'm going to pick this one because it's one of the few positive ones. It's from Eric D. Snyder of ericdsnyder.com. Just want to point out... D. Snyder? <laughs> no, I wish. Just want to point out, uh, based on this picture, a very white man, I'll say. Uh, positive <laughs> review, though. He says, uneven but often very funny. When it spoofs black culture, the movie connects solidly. This one from uh, Mark Palmero uh, from the coast uh, out of Halifax, Nova Scotia is the reason why I picked it. So I'm going to read this as uh, as Maritimer there, fella. Uh, the airplane formula gets reworked as a raunchy setup, uh, send-up by of uh, black racial stereotypes. But uh, the movie has uh, an era of bad sketch comedy there, fella. Um, I added the hate that there, fella. <laughs> I wasn't gonna read another one, but then I found our old uh, our old late friend Ken Hankey. Uh, oh, what did Ken have to say Mountain about Express? this? <laughs> well, Ken had some words. Uh, he says the makers of Soul Plane simply have no taste, and they try to make up for it by demonstrating that they also have no talent. Woo! <laughs> it's a good thing he wasn't a fashion critic. Ken, My goodness, Ken, that was cat e. Came to play, right? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, so Sean McBride, Sean the movie guy, he wrote, uh, Older audiences will be offended by most of what passes for comedy in Soul Plane, but there's no denying that a younger, hip-hop-flavored crowd uh, should be quite amused. Two and a half out of four. Oh. But it's still a rotten review. Yeah. I mean, Roger Ebert, when he gives stuff two and a half, he still says thumbs down. I think it's like three or up is like a full thumbs up. Oh, okay. Two and a half is like his border thing where he's like thumbs up, it's just, it thumbs down, but it's like just missing like a little bit just to push it into a good other, movie. Other folk might enjoy it immensely is, is what he's getting. Yeah. Okay. And now we shall delve deep yes. into the depths of... The snake pit. Yep. Uh, so the audience review is Vincent T. Uh, so it gives it one and a half out of stars. And he says, my gosh, an insult to black people the world over. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's spot on. Cause, but Tatiana S. This movie is so funny. The cast is amazing. I laugh from the beginning to the last scene. This is for adults due to the kind of jokes they played around. Soundtrack is also really good. Five out of stars. <sighs> I mean, soundtrack Woeful. by the RZA, I will say, is the one of the credits at the beginning. So nothing. So this has to be one of those movies that the uh, the soundtrack is considerably better than the movie. The soundtrack took me back a little bit, too. <laughs> some of those yeah. songs i was like oh i remember hearing them back in the day um okay lucas n uh gives it uh, one out of stars if you are a black person i discourage you from seeing this movie if you are a white person i discourage you from seeing this movie in fact if you are any type of person don't see this movie because it is a bad movie all right uh so my next one comes from uh, david g uh and he writes david geffen David Geffen, probably. Okay. Um, it's better, funnier film 
then 3.6 out of 10. See it on HBO. Three out of stars. Okay. So it's better than 3.6, but not better than 6 out of 10. <laughs> yeah, it's between 3.7 and 6. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> I think Gretarika J is a little confused um, with uh, their review here. I love this movie, okay. but it won't play. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think you need to get a new uh, <laughs> DVD player, Puerto <laughs> Rico. Uh, my next one uh, comes from Brian M. I can only assume it's former Prime Minister, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. Oh and uh, he writes, It's been way too long since I've watched this. Lol. <laughs> he would like this movie. Three out of stars. Ugh. Oh, by the way, it, I just realized Greta Rica's comment because there was a there was a note here that the uh, Kevin Hart had said that like this was a this was a movie that got bootlegged super hard before it came out like on the streets, and he yeah. his quote was, uh, "It made forty million dollars on the streets," <laughs> which I'm wondering now. <laughs> I'm wondering now if Greta Rica bought a copy from like a bootlegger. <laughs> She's like, "It's not playing." <laughs> hey, hey, Kevin, you know why it made forty million dollars on the street? Because no anybody wanted to pay legitimate money for this movie, and nobody ended up watching it because like three quarters of those movies don't work. <laughs> um, all right, my last one is from Carlos V. And uh, his review reads as such. Relax, idiots. This is a really funny film. Top 10 in my all-time favorite movies. Five out of stars. That's that's a cry for help. <laughs> uh, my last one comes from Anastasia. So the former uh, princess of Russia. <laughs> sure, she's on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and she writes... Okay, last parts, 13 to own. Four and a half out of stars. Wow, I couldn't have said it better myself. I think the 13 is supposed to be like a heart. Oh, okay. As in that she'd love to own it, but it doesn't It doesn't come off that way in the text <laughs> on Rotten Tomatoes. We sound so old. I think when she puts those symbols together, <laughs> she's trying to make a heart. <laughs> It's a winky face. I know it's a winky face. I've seen them use it before on the the cellular phones. <laughs> All right. Well, those are the reviews for this hunk of shit. Um, <sighs> so next week, Nathan is going to pick a movie, and it's our fifth Thursday, so that means it's a small screen shameful. We'll tell you that much. <laughs> Reason to celebrate. Um, and... Uh, <laughs> And, I mean, it's going to be one of those rare movies until, like, probably July because we have a lot of Patreon stuff. We have Listener's Choice coming up. So, here you go. It's going to be one of those rare movies that we pick in the next couple of months. Um, but, Nathan, give us a clue as to what's coming. Okay. Are you guys all ready for this? <clears throat> ra ra sis boom haya. There you go. So you, yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> Nathan, is there anything you want to ask? Maybe not about the movie, well, but, you know. No, well, no, maybe about movies in in general, I guess. Uh, Brendan, uh, you know, I know here in our neck of the woods, uh, we're starting to get some, some vaccines, and comparatively, our case counts are fairly low. Uh, but we are all still doing our, even doing our best to stay inside and, and uh, you know, keep things uh, from being spread about. Um, and in doing so, we're obviously we're taking uh, part in a lot of television and movies and things like that. So it makes me kind of wonder. Live hey, puppet God. shows, yeah. <laughs> right. Well, well, of all that, what you watching, bud? Um, I actually just watched a little a little horror thriller um, called The Rental. I uh, don't know if you've if you heard of this one. It came out, I believe, this year or last year. But it's actually the directorial debut of uh, Dave Franco. So James's okay. uh, younger brother. Um, it has uh, Dan Stevens and Allison Brie and two other people whose names escape me. And it's a movie about these two couples who go to um, a little like, you know, a little rental, a little cottage rental. And an Airbnb, if you will. I think it is actually supposed to be an Airbnb. <laughs> um, okay. 
there's some tension. There's like a lot of little tension early on. Like the guy who owns it is kind of racist. There's some there's some potential jealousy and tension between the couples, and then there's some weird shit that starts going. It's one of those movies where I want to I want to say less about it and just say that it's a really great little tense horror movie. Um, it takes some unexpected turns, and it's a slow burn. I will say that. But uh, yeah, check it out. The Rental. I believe okay. you can watch it on Prime in Canada. Okay, cool. Well, um, I actually watched. Uh, oh, what you, what are you watching, bud? I don't know. I'll. Uh, I, I, I don't know, but I'm watching. Uh, I watched anyways. Uh, 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 another horror movie. I know. Surprise, Ooh. surprise. Um, but this one um, uh, was a little ditty called "The Devil's Reign." And it has uh, Tom Skerritt and William Shatner between Star Trek the series and Star Trek the motion picture. So he was definitely uh, slumming it. Um, And finally, Ernest Borgnine as the villain. Is is he the devil's reign? He is the he is actually he is the leader of of a satanic cult, um, and the practical effect, effects makeup that they use on him in the uh, the closing scenes of the movie are just superb. In that um, they look ridiculous under high definition uh, standards. Also, um, I don't feel they need to do any sort of real um, I don't know. Uh, prosthetic or, or makeup work on him given that his eyebrows make him automatically already look like the devil <laughs> um yeah i mean he's just like he looks like an evil uh version of the guy from up um yes yes he does and that is on the that is also on prime in canada and i'm guessing probably just but everywhere it, else because it doesn't look like it would look like a whole lot to secure the rights to broadcast that movie anywheres all right it, it starts off promising and just quickly loses all steam <laughs> Perfect. Uh, strong recommendation from Nathan there for the Devil's. Hey, you know what? It, uh, I would rather watch it again than watching this movie. Yeah. Again. Say that about a lot of yeah. movies. You know, a movie you can't say that about though. Postal. Still better than Postal. No, this is still better than Postal. <laughs> Not by a large margin. No, it's it's in or a large marge from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. It is pretty close to being as bad as Postal. It's in that ballpark. Yeah, which is Comiskey Park, I think. <laughs> yeah, Comiskey Park. Yeah, yeah. I still think Sharon Tate is at the bottom, but it's it's very close for me. It's very, very close. So I can still mm. confidently say still better than Postal. <laughs> Nathan, your good friend Montrose is here to say a few quick words. Yes, and he's got a pep in his step these days, I'll tell you what. Let's get, me get him here. <clears throat> Hello! It's your good friend Montrose Monkington the Third here, and my goodness, as I said before, it is great to be back. Uh, just a quick missive, uh, because I, I want to have as little association with this movie in any way, shape, or form uh, as possible. So, uh, check out Montrose Monkington TV on YouTube, be friends with me at Facebook, uh, the group Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and Friends, and finally, tweet at me at Montrose the Third number 3 RD on Twitter, uh, but don't tell them you heard it on this episode, uh, because I, again, do not want to be associated with this movie. Uh, thank you, more later. Yeah, make sure you use the the promo code Monkington Soul Plane. Uh, Don't check you out. dare, you rat bastard! <laughs> wow, <laughs> I, I've never heard him swear like he that before. He, yeah, he really, uh, he really tested the censors on this show. He really, he does not want to be associated with this this movie in any way at all. Even even just by through talking about it. All right, well, that's the show. That's all from us. Um, you can find us on all the podcast apps. Of course, our home base is Age of Radio. Big time. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Twitter and Instagram, you can follow us at WWTT Podcast. Just search for us on Facebook. We're on patreon.com slash WWTT Podcast, Redbubble, T Public, all that good stuff. But that all having been said, Nathan, I've got questions. Oh, I don't know if I've got answers, but I'll give it a shot, pal. In in a world <laughs> Thanks, thanks, LaFontaine. In, in which the movie Soul Plane exists. Oh, it's not a world I want to live in. How can one person have faith in a living God? 
Not so much a living, just a benevolent one. A benevolent I mean, God. How can there be yeah. one if this movie exists? I, I that that's my that's my main question, Nathan. That's your main question. <laughs> and 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 on top of all that, for yeah. a, 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 an intelligent being, an omnipresent being in the sky, that could allow this this monstrosity from just playing on several multiplexes, some probably filled with people people having to put this into their into their brains having paid theater money paid theater money i didn't pay a dime and i still feel like i wasted theater money i just like i am so bummed out after watching this movie of how bad it is that all i can really really fucking ask right now is one thing (laughs) go right ahead what were they thinking look inside Look inside your tiny mind and look a bit harder Cause we're so uninspired, so sick and tired Of all the hatred you harbor So you say, it's not okay to be gay Well I think you're just evil You're just some racist who can't tie my laces Your point of view is medieval 